In this video, I'll be covering outbound content inspection with the HTTPS proxy. The first thing I'm going to dig into is just the decryption basics that happen when you enable content inspection. The next thing I'll cover are the requirements for the HTTPS proxy authority certificate. And then lastly, I'll cover some deployment options for that proxy authority certificate to be installed on the clients. So as the title here says, content inspection is decryption. That's the whole point of it. And why is this important? Well, that's because most traffic these days is HTTPS. So if you're currently just using an HTTP proxy for your protection, or you have an HTTPS proxy without content inspection, you're seeing very little of what's actually happening. That's because without decryption, you can only see the domain information. So you can see what website they're going to, but you can't see anything they're doing on that website. And you can see IP addresses, but again, that's not really giving you a whole lot of detail. But once you start decrypting this traffic, it becomes plain HTTP at which point you can see full URL paths, which would include things like the file names and other stuff that they're accessing on that website. And then in addition to that, you can actually see the content of those connections. So if they're downloading files or they've got maybe some kind of malware on their computer that's uploading something, you'd be able to see that happening and apply all of our subscription services to that traffic and block any malicious stuff that's going on. So what's happening in this content inspection process for outbound connections through the HTTPS proxy? Well, the client on the Firebox's internal interface wants to make a connection to the remote web server, which is on the external. If we were just allowing the client connection straight through the Firebox to the server without content inspection, well, then everything's fully encrypted and there's really nothing the Firebox can see within that connection. So what the Firebox needs to do is to split this into two pieces. We need to have the internal side, where it creates essentially a fake web server, and then the external side, where it acts as a fake client talking to the real web server. During this process, the Firebox obtains the original website certificate, brings it over here, and loads it into its fake web server, and then it has to re-sign this certificate using its own proxy authority CA. And the reason it needs to do that is because that allows it to inject its own private key into the mix. I would refer you to the Certificate Basics video to see why that's important, but the short of it is that that would allow the Firebox to decrypt anything on this side of the connection. So all the data the client is sending and receiving through the Firebox would be decryptable by the Firebox. Once it is decrypted, it becomes just plain HTTP traffic at that point. So we can apply all of our subscription services to it, and you can see all the contents of those connections as they pass through the Firebox. Of course, during this procedure, the client is going to throw a certificate warning in the browser, because when the Firebox has to re-sign this original web server certificate using its proxy authority CA, it is changing the issuer of that certificate. The root CA that was originally on there is removed and it is replaced with the Firebox's proxy authority CA. Everything else remains intact, so whatever was on that original certificate, the common name, subject alternative name, expiration date, all that other stuff stays the same. We don't change any of that information. It's just the issuer or root CA of that certificate that will be altered when the Firebox is hosting it here for the client to connect to. And since the client does not trust that cert because it has no record of it in its certificate authority list, then it's going to throw a certificate warning. I'd refer you again to the certificate basics video 
where that is covered in more detail. So I just mentioned the proxy authority CA certificate is not trusted by any clients out of the box. So we have to fix this, otherwise everybody's going to see certificate warning for every HTTPS website they go to. And there are two methods to resolve this. The first being probably the best and easiest method by far, which would be to have a local CA certificate that you import into the Firebox. And when it comes to that, you really have two choices. You can use Active Directory or some other tool. There's plenty of them out there that are typically free and you can create your own CA. There is a separate video on the Active Directory process and other tools as well, so please go and check out that other information. Beyond that, you can also use the default proxy authority certificate that comes on the Firebox, but this method is much more difficult because you have to import a certificate onto every client, and if anything were to happen to the Firebox, let's say you had to get an RMA or you replace the Firebox with a newer model or you factory default the box, that certificate will be lost on the Firebox as well as the private key behind it. So you would have to go through this process all over again of redeploying the certificate anytime something were to happen. So it's always in your best interest to create your own CA certificate using another tool and then import that into the Firebox and potentially onto the client machines depending on which type of CA you're using. The other important thing to note here is that for the certificate that you can import in the Firebox, the reason it must be from a local CA is because you will not be able to purchase a CA from a public company. You can't go to GoDaddy or GeoTrust or Digicert or any of these companies and buy a CA certificate because that would mean they are granting you the same CA status that they have to an individual. So they are not going to sell you the type of certificate that is required to do this process. So if you do decide to use the default proxy authority certificate that comes on the Firebox, there are three different places you can obtain this certificate for distribution. The first and probably easiest option is to go to the certificate portal. It is an HTTP site that is hosted on the Firebox on port 4126 with the URL path slash cert portal. When you go there, there's just a download button there's nothing else. So it's very simple to obtain. You can also use the Firebox System Manager, and download it through the certificates window, and then the web UI also has the same menu where you can export that cert. Again, the certificate portal is the best option because if there's users out there that are able to kind of do this on their own, you can just say, hey, go to this website. They're able to download that file run through the operating system wizard to do the import. It's pretty straightforward. There's even instructions on the certificate portal itself, which we'll see in a moment. And if you have any guest users that you actually do want to inspect, you can also redirect them to this portal and they'll be able to download the file and install it on their client device and they should be good to go. So I've opened the Firebox System Manager and I went to View Certificates, or you can just click this icon, and this is the Certificates menu. Right here I have the Proxy Authority Certificate selected, and this is the default certificate. You can tell it's the default because it says Watch Card Technologies, Fireware, HTTPS Proxy, Serial Number, the date it was created, and it lets you know that it is in fact a CA certificate. If we click on the details, we see pretty much the same thing. You can also see the expiration date right here in the Valid 2 section. So if you're curious when your current certificate is going to expire or you're worried that it's a little too close, go ahead and regenerate that certificate, which you can see in another video, and you'll have a new expiration date that's typically going to be 10 years into the future. So this certificate can in fact be exported. I'll go ahead and name the file and then save it. Once that's saved, I'll be able to use that for 
importing into different client devices. If you downloaded the file from the WatchGuard web UI or through the Firebox system manager, it may have the PEM extension. So you can simply go ahead and rename this file and give it an extension of CER or CRT. And that way, Windows will recognize it as a certificate so that you can run the certificate import wizard automatically. So I'll go ahead and double click that. And right here, we can confirm the details and we have an install certificate button. When I click that, it's going to ask me if I want to do it as a user or machine certificate. Go ahead and do a machine. And then I'm going to place it into the trusted root certification authority store. It must be in that certificate store in order for the web browsers to use it. When you're done, the import should succeed, and now the computer will trust that certificate for web browsing. The alternative is to go to the certificate portal. So HTTP IP address the firebox colon 4126 slash cert portal page is very straightforward. You click the download button, it will download that same proxy authority certificate. And it tells you right here that after you download it, just follow your operating systems instructions. And it has an import wizard, typically. And it tells you here you must import it into the trusted root certification authority store. That's key. If you import it into the wrong store during the wizard, the certificate will not work for web browsing purposes. When it comes to configuring the HTTPS proxy for inspection, modify the HTTPS proxy and then edit the proxy action that you're using or create a new one, doesn't matter which. I've already created one here for an example, so I'll go ahead and edit that. You can see a list of default domains here. All of them are currently set to allow. When you're working with content inspection, there are two main ways that you can perform this type of decryption, and that can be done either on a domain basis, or you can do it using web blocker categories. I'll first show you the domain names procedure. So everything here in the list is set to allow, which means it's going to remain fully encrypted as it passes through the proxy. You can think of an allow like an exception. But if there was a specific domain that I wanted to decrypt, I could just fill it out like this. And you'll notice here that I just put a star for any subdomains and then the domain example.com. Because we are working with domain names in this list, you cannot put URLs here. So do not put a slash or any other characters after this because those would no longer be considered domains. And if I want to decrypt this particular traffic, I would choose the inspect action and then I would choose whatever HTTP proxy action I'm currently using. So I have one created right here that has all of my services and other parameters configured for HTTP. I want to apply all those same rules to this HTTPS traffic for the example.com domain once it's decrypted. So I'll go ahead and hit OK there and you can see this is what it looks like in the list. It'll show you the proxy action that you're using and you'll see the inspect action. You'll also notice that there is a predefined content inspection exceptions list. If I open that up, there's a list of default domains that typically don't work very well when they're decrypted. There are certain applications, mainly um, things like Skype and other Office apps, that don't work when you're trying to break that encryption. So it's not so much websites, it's more application side of things, but these are just known to have issues when you're performing this type of decryption. So we have that list by default. You can just turn it off or on as necessary. And again, if you want to create your own exceptions, simply add them here as an allow action, and that means they will not be decrypted. If you want to decrypt everything by domain, you would say for the no matched rule, just inspect, 
and then choose your HTTP proxy action that you want to apply. That simply means that if it's not in the list above here, if it's not one of these domains, then it will be inspected. But that's a bit heavy-handed. That's going to do everything except what's in this exception list. So there's a different way. I'll flip that back to allow, and then I'll head over to the web blocker menu right here. And what you'll notice is that I have already chosen a web blocker action, and this action is what's denying different categories. But what I can do in this list is choose from the remaining allowed categories the ones that I want to decrypt or inspect. So this gives me a lot of flexibility because I can decide if there are certain things that I don't want to decrypt in my environment. For example, if I were to just select everything in the list here and set it to inspect and make sure I have the right proxy action selected here, that means that I'm going to be decrypting all these categories. Again, a bit heavy-handed, but I could select pretty much every single category and then make exceptions for things like this, financial data services. This would be banking information. So if I want to give my employees some privacy when they go to do any kind of banking, then this would exempt all domains within this web blocker category from being decrypted or inspected. And the same can be done with things like health and a variety of other categories. So it's really up to you where you want to make those exceptions. The other thing to consider is that doing this on-the-fly decryption and re-encryption through the HTTPS proxy is very resource intensive for the Firefox. It will consume a lot of CPU power to do this. So your Firefox will see a higher load once you enable this feature. And if you're using a smaller device or it's something that's already a bit overutilized, you may need to come in here and be a bit more selective about where you're applying this type of content inspection. So you may not be able to do it for all web traffic if your box is already experiencing a very high load. You may also be wondering about the order of operations when it comes to precedence. The domain names list, whatever you put here, always takes highest precedence over everything. So if there's something here that you are explicitly inspecting or decrypting, or explicitly allowing, which is an exception, or even just outright denying, anything you put here is what's going to happen, regardless of this exception list up here or the web blocker list. Once it's done evaluating the domain names, it will move into this predefined exception list. And then lastly, it will use whatever is defined within the web blocker list. So these categories essentially have lowest precedence. But if you don't have anything superseding it on this list, then the web blocker categories will be what's applied to the traffic. That about wraps it up for the configuration of the HTTPS content inspection. As a quick recap, remember that content inspection is decryption, so those things can be used interchangeably. When it comes to the Firebox's proxy authority certificate, you need to use a local CA or the Firebox's CA for that certificate. You cannot purchase a certificate for this purpose. For the certificate portal, that is the easiest option if you go the manual deployment route, but it can also be used in conjunction with other deployment methods for things like guest users or other devices. Using granular inspection is very important to help you give some privacy to your users for certain web categories or specific domains, or to make exceptions for domains that aren't working properly when decrypted or when addressing load problems on the Firebox. If you need any more information on the HTTPS content inspection, please use the WatchGuard technical search.